Hey, what's up, everybody? If you appreciate the format and you appreciate what we're doing here, then make sure you contribute to the Cash App. Make sure you contribute to the PayPal. Make sure you donate to the Super Chat. It's only you and your contributions that keep this thing going. Thanks. Trap spots and pill packs, crack addicts and black tops like mobile home and methadone. Bust back and backtrack and try to make it home. I live for happiness, I war for peace of mind. I shine like white suns, I walk a bright line. Take bright food and eat light at the right hand. It is what it is, he said, I am that I am, amen. Dedicated to the lovely ladies, <laughs> damas preciosas. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh. I'm in love, in love again. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with you. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with you. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love. I'm in love, in love again. Sometimes I choose two, sometimes three, that's just me. I think it was 2013 in Rio, no, it was in the DR. It was uh, 2015, I like it, we liked it. Everybody nice, everybody happy. I loved all the lovely ladies twice. My motivation always been lovely women. It's a pitfall, but I'm losing, still winning. Me abuela, rest her soul, would be disappointed at all this sinning. But I know she up in heaven looking down, grinning. Her grandbaby, favorite lost son, winning. I'm a boss, still loving and giving harmless love. Of women. I'm, I'm in love, 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 love again. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with you. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with you. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love. I'm in love, I'm in love again. Get in this pocket, baby. I gotta get in 
in his pocket. That's why I keep it, man, right there in his pocket. It's really fine how white wine freeze my mind and take my first drink till I was about 29. Right on time like a hotline. Call me for a good time. I love fine women even if they ain't mine. But I say no to married women cause that's my limit. No woman, you gon' make love to your husband. I like them young, single, and free that like to love me. I'll even take them 30 if they dance real dirty. You heard me when I spoke, fellas. Take notes. Women like that work and I'm a dangerous flirt. I like to get them with my charm and I get them in my Arms and it ain't no harm. Let this music play on. I'm in love, I'm in love again. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with you. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with you. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love. It's gonna be a little painful right here, man. It's gonna hurt a little bit, but I just, I just want y'all to get that with me. Just, just follow me. Come on, let's go. Tell my sons, most of what I do is for you I promise I never lie, even if the truth is cruel What I do is I withhold what's too ruthless for you It's too heavy, you're not ready, your other brother's almost true Me and his mother, well, we just don't get along I thought we were friends, but deep down I knew I was wrong I thank God for my new son, hey cool little dude Took a break from writing, fighting thoughts of you Hope to hold you one day, maybe while you're still a baby We can just pick up and worry about my ex-lady Just you, me, Roman, and Lil D Find some time on the beach under a tree by the Caribbean Sea I'm in love, in love again I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with you I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with you I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love I'm in love, in love again I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with you I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with you I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with you Volume 5 Coffee Team Introduction. Hey, if you're enjoying the content here at Dennis Sperling Unfiltered, make sure you support it by like, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And also, hit that little notification bell in the corner so that you'll get notice of each and every one of our live feeds. Get up under me She's 
tumble and sweet until she get up on them. And she don't really like to dance aside for a Dominicana, a salsa, a samba, a merengue, cassamba. I get lost in the Antilles a few weeks at a time. Fine women and wine, warm weather and sunshine. I don't mind the lost time. All I miss is my sons. If not for my seed, see the shining sea wouldn't see me in a few years. They'll be grown and gone. I wouldn't say I'm retired, but even good wine expires. As for life for conflict, I earn this trip. I like to dance my life away in peace and happiness. Dance your life away. It's okay to dance your life away. Dance your life away. It's okay to dance your life away. Taking with the Chica, Fumando Cubano, one hour from Puerto Rico. Me and my amiga, high as a seagull. Give me the Nero Laga, yo, estoy muy rico. Bonito, blandito, hova and caliente. Might be the right type, late flights out to Cali. Let us shop on San Vicente, over on Rodeo. Most the young girls hard, just playing my part. Like my women, like my coffee, cafe con leche. Been down with light brown since back before you met me. It's a seasonal meaning, sometimes I like them black. Black is midnight on the late night flight back. Just a little bit of love for you 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 A West Coast Sunday morning I don't rap, I speak fly, spit fire to all sides You want it, I got it, just be glad I retired Enough of that, let's get back to this last batch of classic master clapbacks A hard life had on the beach with a high piece And she in a two-piece, somewhere in the West Indies Hot damn, but I done found my peace Odors on my feet, on social me, sociable me I preach a sermon from the seat on my beach As I eat on the peach, I was born to teach Make them see what I see, all oh, hell, the coffee king Now have it like that, I'm Afro-Caribbeano Afro-Latino, since Dayton's on El Camino. Just a little bit of love for you. 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 She got Dominican good hair. Knows how to behave. I call it good head, cause it does what I say. When I say go play, it goes straight in the waves. Get it straight in the waves. See, don't stop play dates. Some ladies hate, but that's not your place. Be happy with what you got. Don't worry about what you're not. I'm not worried about what I'm missing. Spend time in other countries, my blessing. Stay focused on this girl I'm kissing. In a super fly life I'm living, provided by my web past. Ain't haunted no more, got up and ghosts. Now I'm out like back in the day when I was a kid. Yay, big in the sunshine, running from one time. Just a little bit of love for you. 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 Screaming, yell like a little kid. Yeah, I know why. My daddy will fight for your rights. Yeah, fight for your rights. If you 
Ruben and Log in the car accident. Call my daddy returned in Dennis Sperling. Hello, I'm attorney Dennis Sperling. If you've been injured in a car wreck, call me at 713-229-0770. Call my daddy, daughter, daddy. This the last song, call it the lost son Went missing at birth, child of the Caribbean Monthly run, Houston down through to the sun It's a joy and joy visiting my baby boy My young son living in Kingston, real roots boy Trini baby raised by a pretty Jamaican lady Still love she gon' see every few weeks In it the curse, refer to the first line in his verse While my see back Trinidad, may go back to Trinidad Ain't got his papers, trump card to catch the vapors It's nothing to a boss, cause lost son stay lost Over light blue water to Baby mama need a daughter Don't mind flying Jamaica to the DR Picked up a hot young Dominicana Made a star It's not too far It's about an hour in the stars Y'all remember what I said Love is where it starts I don't know where I wanna go I don't know where I wanna go I don't know where I wanna go I just wanna be That's really who I am. I just gravitated to the Coffee King, but um, if you don't mind, let me reminisce. Jamaica to DR, DR to Bogota, Avianca flight, Medellin, love the party scene. If you seen what I seen, you say it's nice to be me, international, which is hustle, I'm the Coffee King. Review my quotes, it's all about you and find my folks, coast to coast, south to north, loading them boats. My baby mama, Miss Jamaica, ex-wife, aka Dominican girlfriend, look like a young Beyonce. Got a house in the islands, I visit two weeks every month, they ain't trying to stunt, man, just trying to get a suntan. From Trey Burks to Coffee King, everything in between, you find your peace. And happiness, remember me La familia primero, family first Got three sons, no earth Hoping, trying to be the first to birth My baby girl into this world Lost son, been found Coffee King in the National See you around What's up, you guys? This is Dennis Sperling, and I'm back again, and I want to talk to you guys about a very interesting subject, and uh, it has to do with your relationships with your mothers. Uh, here again on the Sabbath, the holy day, a Sunday, I take this opportunity and this time to talk to you all about what many of us, uh, the religion that many of us prescribe to or that our ancestors were proselytized into, that is the 
Abrahamic religion of Christianity. And in doing so, what I do is I use the Holy Bible and show you references because oftentimes what's happened is the Holy Bible has been used by so many to keep black men specifically in a, pay, a place of subserviency. Um, they, they use the Bible basically as a sword. They use it to, uh, to oppress us, to make us think that what we're thinking and the way we know to be right is, it is, is actually wrong. It goes against God's word. Many of you haven't actually looked into the Bible. Now, here's the thing. Um, the, the, the unique situation that black men are in is that in our society, in the black society here in the United States, the black mother is basically considered the sacred cow. She can do no wrong, i.e. she's a black queen mama. I mean, you're a black crack fiend, but you're still a black queen. When all of us now who are thinking, men, no, there's no way you could be a black queen and a crack fiend at the same time. That's just ridiculous. But we are not allowed to speak against our mothers, even if she was a horrible person, if she was a crackhead, if she had a gambling problem, if if she had men coming in and out of the house, if she was verbally abusive, physically abusive, if she had multiple children by multiple men, if she put you out, all these different things. OK, she's disrespectful. Even to this day, as a grown man, she. You're not allowed to say anything wrong. And matter of fact, you got to keep coming back for more. And so what I'm going to do, brothers, it, 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 and what I continue to do on this page is I preach a freedom doctrine. That is that you are free to be the child that God wants you to be, that the whole world belongs to you and you're not beholden to anyone, that you are here because God wants you to be here, not because of the biological parents that you have, not because of what... The, what they did for you, but 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 because God wanted you to be here and it's your obligation to figure out what his purpose is for you, get on that purpose and to fulfill it. But above all, you are entitled to peace of mind and happiness. This is my doctrine. So, um, you know, I want to talk to you guys. I want to first give a shout out to Brian Tisdale. He says, I cut my so-called mother off. No questions asked. We're attempting to disrespect me as a man. Um, salute chat. Fellow Maj, remember Uncle D is a legend. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, man. Volcanus has always been there. And to everybody else who's contributed to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal, uh, I think this is a good lesson. I think that you guys, when you look at this on the replay, I'm going to give you some food. I'm going to give you some, some information that you can actually use. Shout out to Chocho. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And a big shout out to... Uh, someone who contributed to my PayPal. I love it when folks contribute to the PayPal. The PayPal is 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 the gold mine. Man. PayPal and Cash App actually. But thank you, uh, David Brewster. I appreciate you so much. You guys, look the, the link to the Cash App and the PayPal are right here at the bottom. Uh, make sure you hit the number one button if you can hear me. Also hit the number one button and then hit the like button. Let's get the likes up now before we get started. Uh, fully, but that was just my intro. Um, and, um, you know, here we go. Uh, but go ahead and hit that, hit the like button. We got 54 people in the chat room. We got 38 likes. Hit the like button. I promise you, this video right here is probably going to help free a lot of men because even if you don't believe in Christianity wholeheartedly, and there's so many of you don't, hey, you're Baptist pastor. Methodist, but you've been lied to. You watched them rob the community for decades, but they you still are in, entrenched or in, embedded in your brain as if this is the word of God, and so you're bound to. It. And so what I'm going to do is, with my research, I'm going to help free you. This is where we are, Phil. You know, this is where we are. Uh, you can't choose your family. We know that, um, but um, but. Uh, you may wish you could if you were burdened with a terrible mother. Unlike uh, when you were a child, you have more to say in a relationship uh, that you have with your mother as an adult. Start by, here's, this is my advice, start by setting appropriate boundaries with your mom. Then work to heal from any unresolved issues. You got to get therapy. Having a difficult mom may have caused, uh, may have caused you a lot of issues. Finally, be sure to lean on other people in your life uh, much needed empathy for much needed empathy and support. That's going to be hard to find in the black community because remember, in the black community, 
Oh, you can never say anything about your mom. That is just like blasphemy. She's the God of the black community. And unfortunately, that's one of our problems. Instead of treating them, our mothers and every other woman like a human being, we treat them like gods and that's a problem. Unfortunately, and here's another thing, unfortunately, many of our black brothers grew up in the same toxic cultures with the same type of horrible mothers. And so exhibiting the same toxic behavior, destructive behavior they saw. Furthermore, because the black community holds women in, in general in such high regard, and the black mother is a sacred cow, uh, we are not allowed to voice our complaints and must hold it all in. As a teenage male in the black community, you are not typically allowed to even verbalize your distrust or dislike for your mother, for how she's treated. What do they tell you? Oh, you only got one mother. Oh, you you know, you need to love your mom. Your mom didn't have to have you. She carried you for nine months. So now you have to dedicate the rest of your life to taking the crap that she's given you, the disrespect, the dishonor. I don't think so. Even now, as grown men, many of you are afraid to acknowledge that you had a horrible mother. Many of you guys listening right now, you're afraid to acknowledge my mom was horrible. You don't want to say it. I get it. I understand. Now, here's the thing. I got a quick test for you, fellas. This is how you know if your mom was horrible. Okay? I'm going to ask you guys this question, and you let me know. All right? It's a, it's a real simple question. You, you let me know. Ask yourself, uh, uh, do you want a woman like your mother, right? Do you want a woman like your mother to raise your children? Okay? Now, if, if you answer no, I don't know, or I can't answer, then the chances are you had a horrible mother. Period. Again, ask the question. Ask yourself. A quick test. Do you want a woman like your mother raising your children? If you answer the question, no. If you answer the question, I don't know, or I can't answer, then the chances are you had a horrible mother. Okay, fellas? I'm just trying to get you to be honest with yourself first. If this is touching home, if this is something that you guys want to hear, hit the number one button. If this is something that you feel is going to help you in this conversation, hit the number one button. If you feel, because the first thing we have to ask ourselves is, did I have um, did I have a good mom? Did I or or did I have a horrible mom? If your answer is no, I don't know, or I can't answer then the chances are you had a horrible mom. And that's just something that you have to deal with. Here are some other signs that you had a horrible mom. She avoided or neglected you when you were a child. In other words, she dumped you off on somebody else. She gave you to your grandmother. She gave you to her sister. She sent you to foster care. You probably had a horrible mom. She abandoned you. She sent you off to live with somebody else. You probably had a horrible mom. She physically or verbally abused you. You had a horrible mom, fellas. That's just it. There's no ifs, ands, but that's not normal. If your mother physically or verbally abused you, you had a horrible mother. Did she set a bad example? She was around there smoking crack. She had guys running in and out the house, smoking weed, smoking drugs, getting drunk, fighting. She's a horrible mom. If she showed favoritism or partiality between you or your other relatives or your other brothers and sisters, you had or, or between the girls and the boys, you had a horrible mom. If 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 she was oppressive, overbearing, authoritarian, author, authoritarian, she was a horrible mom. What did she do? Huh? She wouldn't let you uh, express yourself. She was overbearing, always over on top of you. Basically, she took out her issues with the world on you. She was authoritarian. You couldn't, I mean, right down to what you wore every day, everything. She's like the, she's more like a, a prisoner, uh, a, 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 a correctional officer than a mother. You had a horrible mom. She was, she had irresponsible financial behavior. She would take your money meant for you and do other things with it that didn't even help you, the child support, the welfare, whatever. You had a horrible mom. And you know, it, 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 here's the thing, fellas. Uh, some of you were like, damn. Yeah, that's a horrible mom. Good moms don't do that. That's horrible mom territory. And some of you guys are so accepting that you don't realize that that's horrible mom behavior. Some of you are like, you mean irresponsible financial behavior? Yeah. Because if you had irresponsible financial behavior as a father, you would be a horrible dad. And so it cuts both ways. 
All right. If you you spent your money at the casino and gambling and on other women, you would be a horrible dad. If your mother spends money on on everything other than you, clothes, partying, drugs, whatever, she's a, taking trips. She's a horrible mom. Right. Too much interfering in your life. Even now, always in your business. She's a horrible mom. And here's another one. Not trusting you as a child, always blaming you for different things. Always saying it must have been you. It, it blame me that she's a horrible mom, fellas. Period. This is what it is. Now, I gave you guys that poll. I actually ran this poll about, um, you know, and I asked guys on my page, several guys, I asked the question like, uh, so I, I did a survey, you, you know, and I want to get let you guys hear the results just so you know that you're not the only ones. And it's OK, fellas. It's OK to admit that this is how you begin to heal. The only way you can start to heal is this, is if you first accept the truth about your life and you're not passing any. Uh, this is this is not something that's just germane to the black community. This is not something new uh, to one group or another. We're just discussing, you know, and unfortunately, the culture that we have here in black America kind of, you know, as I said earlier, it dictates that many of our moms are horrible. So I'm going to let you guys see some stuff that I pulled up before we go into the solutions for this, for how we deal with it. Because see, the thing is, a lot of you guys are stuck. A lot of you guys are stuck in, you know, with this situation because you know your mom is horrible. You know she did these things. She, she was abusive. She was all these other things. And then what? You still have to, you feel, in, you feel bound to deal with her. Why? You feel down bound to deal with because the Bible says, uh, honor and respect your parents basically, and you interpret that under all circumstances. So I asked the question on my page, do you want a woman like your mother to raise your children? Good or bad, let's talk about it. Just gentlemen here, Scott Haywood, no. Cameron Cunningham, in general, yes, the quality of black women is abysmal. If your goal is to have kids, family, you're about, you all but forced to look outside of black America. So his answer is really no, okay? <laughs> That's what he's saying. Yes, actually, my mother was a great woman, treated my father like a king, raised my system, and I pretty good. Okay, his answer is yes. Uh, this brother here, Elijah, I'll give her a yes when she was younger, no older. So the answer is no, all right? Um, Bob Bauman, no, but my mother has changed and gotten older. The version from my childhood, no. The version from my adulthood, yes. So his answer is no. Mark Smith, I do. My mother was excellent, best woman. Yet, so in, so in one two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so far we got four no's and two yeses. Uh, another gentleman, Mr. Danny, no, not for me. Hell no, another one, another hell no. And see this right here, when you got all of these right here, this is the number 10, all this explaining, this is a yes and no question. This is a no, no matter what he says. My mother was a horrible mom growing up, single mother, obviously twice divorced, seven kids, broke behind on the rent, uneducated, working as a career in care home and home care, definitely not the ideal woman to settle down with. I love my mom. And that's beside the point. I love my mom. She did her best, but we didn't have to go through that. The poverty, neglect, infighting, dysfunction, abuse, etc. If I'm going to get involved with the woman, then she has to be the furthest thing from, my, from what my mom is. That means no kids, no prior divorces, no long history of failed relationships and no, and no debt. So basically, out of these 10 men, the first 10 men that answered this, we got seven no's and I'm sorry, we got eight no's and, and two yeses. All right. And here's number 11. No, no. Uh, we got a yes. Uh, this man, Eddie, sure. However, black women these days refuse to play the part of loving wife and mother. Black women just. So this is actually a no. All right. Number 13. So we got, you know, out of. Look, no, my mother was completely selfish, mostly, de most definitely. So that's a third yes. Uh, we got a fourth yes. Justin, no. Reggie Harding, no. But I had a good mom. But he said no. Okay, so what does that mean? And then here's another cat. Thanos, the inevitable, who often visits this show, said, I'd rather be sterilized than give my son a mother like the one I had. These are the strong feelings that these young men had. Malik Israel said double ditto. So that's out of 21 people, you got four yeses and you got all these no's. 
You see what I mean? You got 17 no's. Uh, no, absolutely. Okay, so now we got a five out of 23. Okay, um, absolutely. My mom was crossed between Rosa Parks. Okay, we got six. Okay, we got another no. All right, so now out of 28 people, <laughs> nope. This is what the brothers, so you brothers shouldn't feel alone. Okay, we got no, no, and no. All right, so now we had 30 people. We got five yeses, and we got basically 25 no's and hell no's, and absolutely not. So brothers have strong opinions about this. So the problem is many of you are still conflicted because, I mean, look at it. I would have to go back to my grandma. My, my mother generation suffered too much psychological damage. You got to go back before the 70s. No, that's a no. Another one. Okay, no. And I love my mother, but no. Uh, Khalil Bay. Oh, hell, hell no. Oh, no, 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 no. And then this other dude, Leslie Clark. Today's BW are worst mothers. In fact, I want an Asian Filipino to raise my kids. No. Uh, Marshawn Joe, not. Okay. Uh, Alonja Blue. Yes. Okay. So that's seven yeses. Absolutely. My mother, that's eight yeses. Uh, uh, no. Uh, hell yes. Okay. My mom's spoiled me and treated me like a prince. Okay. That's eight. Uh, now this is now we're at 45 now, right? So 20% of these men, more or less, a little less than 20% are saying no. I give my mother a B minus. So a woman like her would be workable as long as she, that's a no. Okay. So now <laughs> absolutely. Um, yes. No. In the conversation all day, every day. So we got about 10. It took us to, we got to like 50 people before we got 10 yeses. So basically about 20% of you guys say yes, you want a woman like your mother to raise your children. And the rest of you guys, the, the other 50 said no. Okay. So this is a 20. So, so if we use this poll, right? Uh, about 20% of you men, or about 80% of you men based on this poll, are of the opinion that you don't want a woman like your mother raising you. And that's a sad situation. But see, here's the, here's the problem, fellas. Even though you feel that way, even though you have that mom and you know who, what type of person she is, you're still in the quagmire because the Bible says what? The Bible says, honor and respect your parents. You see what I'm saying? And I've been asked this question, how do I deal with this, Mr. Sperling? How do I deal with this, Uncle D? You know, I've been at, you know, and, and, and here's the thing. Um, you want to obey the Lord and he, and, and, but this is a difficult, difficult thing. All right. You, you, you want to honor your mother. You want to honor your parents. And this goes for both parents, but since most of us, you know, we have relationships with our fathers, but it's not to the extent that we have with our mothers because our fathers don't really, it's okay to say I had a horrible dad in the black community. That's nothing wrong with that. But saying you had a horrible mom in the black community, and this is why you don't want to deal with her. It's something that, that's hard to do, you see. And but see, if you got, it's easy to say I got a horrible dad and I don't want to deal with him. It's hard to say that about your mom. So the question that we have to ask ourselves is, um, um, you know, we want to be wise with his wisdom, you know, and and this the word of God, and uh, we've been taught traditions in the black community, uh, and 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 what they love to do is they love to parade God's world word around. OK, but that's really a false teaching. OK, now I want you to listen to this. They'll bring up Ephesians six and one. Right. And it basically said, uh, children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Now, the question is, is this to be applied unconditionally in all cases? And the answer is it is not. Fundamentally, as we interpret and, and apply God's word, we must always remember uh, one other um uh, um, passage in the Bible, and, and there are several we should remember, but I'm going to put this up. The one I just quoted was right here, and that's going to be uh, Ephesians. Check this out right there. Bam. There you go. That's for you to check out. All right. And I want you now, you know, the question is, um, again, like I said, we're not, you're not supposed to obey your parents unconditionally. Okay. Fundamentally, as we interpret and apply God's word, we must always remember this. Look at chap, look at Matthew 12 and 7. And it says as follows: if you have had none, 
if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have con condemned the guiltless. All right, so here's the thing. The Pharisees, of course, ignored mercy as they imposed their evil legalism on people. What is legalism? Legalism is uh, it's legal to have slaves, even though we know it's immoral, right? Legalism, all right? So, so you gotta, they say, obey the law, put your hands up, and I'm gonna shoot you anyway because you're black, whatever. Legalism, right? He didn't obey the law, he resisted arrest, but you're trying to save your life, the very thing that they end up taking from you. So, right, so when it comes to seeing how the Lord would have us deal with evil parents or evil mom, uh, as you try to, their, at, 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 and as you try in their case to apply the commandment to honor your mother and your father, we must do it uh, so in a way that it understands mercy, not sacrifice. Now, what does that mean? That means God is merciful towards you. He does not put a burden upon us and demand that you sacrifice yourself by continuing to allow evil people, whether it's your mother or father, to attack and mistreat you. See, he's merciful for us and he is against the wicked. Let me give you some scriptures that I think demonstrate this proper application of the commandment to honor the parents, but with mercy and sacrifice. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to go to Matthew 8 and 21 and 22. OK, now I'm going to put this. This is I'm putting Matthew 12 and 7 in there because I want you when your parents come up and talk about that honor, thy mother and thy father. You know, I want you to be able to hit them with these passages, too. Now, this is the next passage. OK, now we're going to look at Matthew 8 and 21 and 22. Another of the disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, no. Well, you just said, follow me and leave the dead to bury their own. All right. Now, it was a great dishonor not to be there to bury your father. But what did Jesus say? Yeah, that was basically the law. That's that legalese. But she said, no, you come with me. You, well, I'm not going to put that burden on you. You come on over here with me and we're going to go on and work on this salvation. OK, here's another one. Matthew 10, 34 and 36. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set man against father and daughter against her mother and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and persons and a person's enemies will be those of his own household. All right. Now that's Matthew 34 and 36. So what that's telling you is these familial rape relationships are not absolute. And here's another thing, 19 and 29, because this is Jesus saying, this is what I've come. This is what I've come to do. All right. Basically, I'm going to put the righteous against the unrighteous, uh, the, uh, the in, in righteous. and that's Matthew 10, 34, 36. Let's go to Matthew 19 and 29. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mother or children or lands for my namesake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit uh, eternal life. All right. And here's another one, Luke 2, 48 to 49. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said, uh, said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And that was Jesus talking uh, to, to, to Mary and, 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 and Joseph, right? They had, apparently they hadn't told him that he was God's son. And he said, well, why are you looking for me? I'm in my father's house. So that's another him disobeying his father. This is Jesus. In other words, we're, we're talking, let me read this last one. But again, we're talking about, right, mercy, not sacrifice. Okay. We're, this is who your God is. This is, this is the Christian God. This is from the Bible, right? These are all these passages are here for you. All right. This is what you fight back with. And here's another thing. If anyone, this is Luke 14 and 26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife, and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. This is what Jesus is telling his people, right? Because he's telling you, he, th this was in the case that these people are wicked. You see what I mean? So hate is okay if they're wicked. This is what I'm, see, they use the Bible to bash us upside the head with us and keep us in line. They've been using the Bible like this for centuries against black men. If I'm hitting home, hit the number one button. OK, if I'm hitting home, hit the number one button. Make sure you hit the number one button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. You can see in each of these passages that the commandment to honor the, the father and the mother is not unconditional. 
Okay. It is not to be interpreted and applied in a merciless, wooden, stiff, unbending, absolute manner. When Jesus calls us, we go. We don't stay behind and disregard his call in order to honor your father and your mother. In many cases, to remain with your parents and continue to have any relationship with, with them, even if at a distance would require us to submit ourselves to people who hate the Lord and who will always pressure us to follow them and not Christ, even if they claim to be Christians, okay? These are the worst kind of evil people and are those who claim to be Christians and yet revile and attack and destroy, they're really hypocrites. They're wolves in wool, okay? Wolves in sheep clothing. But we, we have, so, so what I'm trying to tell you fellas, is even if your mama goes to church three or four times a week and she's oppressive, she's abusive, she's disrespectful, that's not what God wants for you, okay? Honor thy mother and thy father is not an absolute commandment. And I've given you these examples, okay? And this is what I want you to remember. This is what I want you to remember when they try to use that against you to manipulate because it's more shaming and it's more guilt. Not only are you not doing what they say, now they tell you, well, this the Bible says honor and Honor thy father and thy mother. This is, you know, it, 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 they use that against you, right? You know, you got people who are sexually abused by their parents, sexually abused by their mother, disrespected, beaten, uh, 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 violated. You got people who whose mother sent them off to go be with other people while she was running the streets. And then now that you've made something out of yourself, you joined the military, you went to college on your own, you you start playing ball, whatever it is, you got a job and you work your way all the way up to the top. Now they want to come back to you and manipulate you and use you and use what you have, even though they weren't there for you. And you know there's something wrong with that. You know absolutely right there's, and they'll say, well, honor thy mother, not father. Well, it's not absolute, fellas. This is what I'm telling you. It, it, it's the reason why many of you stopped going to church because you knew fundamentally in your soul there was something wrong with honoring a mom or a father, but mostly his moms, because the father don't have that sort of right and jurisdiction in the black community, is mostly the mom. Honor thy mother, thy father don't honor thy mother, don't set well with you. Period. Okay, so here's the thing: the Bible gives us specific instructions in scripture as to how we deal with these evil hypocrites. I want you to look at 1 Corinthians 5 and 11. But now I am writing to you to, to not. Now I am, I'm going to put this up here because I want you guys to, to check this out. And if I'm hitting home, fellas, if this, is, if this is meaningful to you, if this is giving you freedom, make sure you contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal. Some of y'all ain't been to church since, since, since y'all was baptized, okay? But, but you don't have to go because we're talking about this word, and I'm preaching a freedom doctrine. See, any religion, any Bible, any spiritual system that does not preach freedom is not one that I adhere to. Period. I'm not, I'm a, even if they got something in there that preaches bondage, I'm going to figure out a way why it, it, it doesn't apply to me. Okay. That's, that's why I'm at. All right. But if I'm hitting home, if this makes sense to you, if this is helping you understand now, how do you free yourselves from these people? This is what the, this is what the Bible says. Uh, 1 Corinthians 5 11. But now I am writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of, of brother if he, is guilty of sexual immorality or greed, or is an idolater, a reveler, a drunkler, a drunkard, or a swindler, not even to each with such a one. So what does that just tell you? That tells you if your mama is get guilty of sexual immorality, greed, if she is she's an idolater, in other words, if she worships idolatry, she, she's in the get the bag culture. You know what I'm saying? If she's a rebel, if, if she's a drunkard, if she's a swindler trying to always beat you out of your money. Okay, that, that's who she's is. That's, who, that's the type of person she is. And what does the Bible say? The Bible says, uh, this is how you, you, you basically, uh, the worst, these are the worst kind of people, are those who claim to be Christians and yet ride, revel in the attack and destroy. They're hypocrites. They're wolves in sheep clothing. We have, you have specific instructions in the scripture as to how to deal with such people. So what does it say? It says it 1 Corinthians 5 and 11. But now I'm writing to you. I'm writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother or sister or mother or father. If they are guilty of sexual immorality or greed or they are an idolater 
or they're a drunkard or a swindler, or they're a rival or a reveler or a drunkard or a swindler. What, a swindler. what does that mean? That means that if you're dealing with somebody like this and you know the type of person they are, it doesn't matter if they're your mom. You know what type of person she is to you. And so you're not bound to deal with them. So you need to be able to articulate that and say, well, yeah, you know, I know you're my mom, but how can I honor you? You want me to honor you as the Bible says, but you're the type of person that the Bible tells me to stay away from. You see, you're the type of person that the Bible tells me to stay away from. So how can you then do that? Uh-huh. And, and what, 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 is a, what is a reveler? That is a person subject to verbal abuse. That is a person who is a, a verbally abusive. That's what a reveler is. Okay? So the, the, these are the type of people that the Bible is saying stay away from because they're not true Christian. These same people that are hitting you over the head with these Christian verses aren't even Christian enough for themselves. And here's another thing. There's no exception to the commandment. There is no exception to this command just because the evil one is a parent. All right, you stay away from those people. Wicked, false Christian parents are almost always revelers. In other words, they're always abusive. They accuse, the, they accuse and slander and shame, right? You ain't doing enough for me. I'm your mama. You need to be doing it. Y'all know y'all, you, you know, look I, I look, I know I'm touching some heartstrings out there. I know this is meaningful to you. If this is meaningful to you, and if this is going to help you at the next family function, if this is going to help you at the July 4th barbecue cookout in your backyard, okay, then you, you the, the, why you don't come around? You know you could have gave your mama $500. And you know you got a no good mom that wasn't there for you. You know you could help uh, 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 pay your mama's card number. And all they do is ever call you when they want something. And then they verbally abuse you when you don't give it. These are no good. These are not the Christians that they honor thy mother. They're not. They're not worthy of honor. The Bible tells you in one Corinthians five eleven to not associate with people like that. And so there's a reason you're running running away from. It. And here, like I said before, there's no exception to this command. Just because the evil one is your mother, wicked, false Christian parents are, are almost always rebels, abusive. They accuse and slander and shame. They use their their speech to vilify us. They they make us the villain, and God hates such people. And we are not, and we are are to have nothing to do with them. Okay, this is what Corinthians. This is what one Corinthians five and eleven says. So now you have your ammunition, fellas. This is this is your ammunition that you need. Now, finally, and I'm gonna put Corinthians one up there if I didn't put it in there. It's right there. That's for you. Okay, this is for you. All right. Now I want to go to somewhere else. Ephesians 6 and 1, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. See, now here's the thing. They use this one too. You see the commandment specific, spe specifies obedience in the Lord. What does that say? Ephesians 6 and 1, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. This is what this is saying. You can't just say, honor thy mother and thy father, and your father and your mother is trying to get you to get out there and sell crap, or your mother and your father are out there uh, putting you out there as a, a young girls out there letting her man have sex with you so that this, so that this, that he'll be willing to stay in the house. They'll them ain't the type of parents you have to honor. That's not what God wants. Ephesians six and one. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. But see, here's the thing. You see, the commandment specifies in the Lord. This tells us that it's not an unqualified obedience. It is it is only obedience in the realm of the Lord. OK, evil parents are not in the realm of the Lord. They operate in Satan's realm and their commandments and, and, and their commands to us are evil. You're not bound to obey or honor such a person. And yes, we can pray uh, Psalms prayer against them, all that. I do not think these kind of wicked people are the ones that the Lord wants us to keep wasting our time and energy on praying for their salvation at all. OK. Uh, he told uh, he told the 70 in the town does not receive them that they're uh, um, this is in John five. He says there are certain classes of people we are not to pray for. Ain't that something? This is the Lord's work. This is a, the Lord says in, in, in one in, in uh, one John and five says there are certain classes of people we are not to pray for. OK, 
This is what this said. How about that? So not only do you leave him alone, you don't even bother praying for him. There's nothing you can do for him. Isn't that powerful? This is what they say. If you struggle with wicked, evil parents or other family members, I think you will think uh, through and apply these scriptures to your case and your parents, and you will see that you can be free from them. In doing so, you will be honoring the Lord and obeying him. Is this helping you? Have you received the message today? I think that, that, that you have. I think, I think that you have. And if you have, then make sure you contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal. Um, I want to bring up another verse with you. And it's, it's, it's often one, and this is just a quick one, okay? In that verse, right, Ephesians, where it says, uh, and I'm going to read it to you, okay? And I'm going to put this one up for you right here because I want y'all to see it. And I want you to always be able to refer back to this. Now, if you go to, I believe it's Ephesians. Six and two, right? Let me. I'm, I want you to read. I want you to read what it says. It said Ephesians six and two uh, says. Let me try and get. I want to make sure I get it all. Okay, Ephesians six and two says, uh, "Well, that honor and thy mother and thy father." Let me get that out. I want you to get this first. Okay, it says Ephesians six and two. And this is the one they often rely on. Right. It says King James Version. It says, honor thy father and mother. And then it follows up with saying, so the days of your life can be long. Right. It says that. And it also mirrors that in Exodus uh, 20 and 12. It says that there. Right. I'm a, a matter of fact, I'll put it in the Exodus one for you guys to take a look at. This is what they bash you upside the head with all the time. They're always bashing you upside the head with this. Right. Bam. But what I want you fellas to do. Is slide, when they do say that, say, quote this. You say Ephesians 6 and 4 says the following. It says the following. Because, I mean, many of y'all ain't going to go all off and all of what, what that whole dissertation that I gave you. You could, all right? But, but you're not going, okay? Now, but what you can do is you can go to Ephesians 6 and 4, which says the following. Fathers, and that means mothers too, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord, okay? This is Ephesians 6 and 4. This is right here for you. You take this and you defend yourselves and you don't let folk manipulate you uh, with the Bible because half of them ain't ready. They just taking what they, see the preachers and the pastors over these years, they know damn well they can't speak against these mothers because the mothers won't bring them kids in. And so if they begin to speak against these mothers, then what happens? Then the church empties out and they can't get their money. So you got these crooked preachers. That's why, that's why you know, Jesus turned. Jesus turned some tables over. He turned some tables over in the temple for a reason. They are motivated by money. They are compromised because of their money, uh, their financial desires. All right. But this is what your Bible says. This is that same Bible that people are always hitting black men upside the head with telling you to honor your mother and father. It says as fathers do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. That's as clear as day. And, and nobody can deny that, period. Okay? So, you know, you guys have some ammunition. I'm going to uh, run a commercial. I'm going to open up the chat room to talk to the brothers. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Central Entities. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. That's a member. Also, uh, Ayala did a show with black men and their moms. One mom confessed she made him a repository of her rage, right? Ayala was blown away and she done the same. Look, they know what they do. All of these women know what they do. They just not, they're, they, they're on the same side though, fellas. They're all on the same side. They're never going to give you this information. But I've given you enough information. I've given you all scriptures. You can't let them bash you upside the head with this Bible anymore because they misquote this Bible and misinterpret this Bible all the time. Don't let them do that to you anymore. You, you, you have to. You know, if you have to come to spaces like this, fine. But if you know it ain't right, most likely it's not right. So you can follow your gut feeling. I'm just giving you some, 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 some uh, Bible. And it doesn't take that much to find this information. But in the meantime, you guys enjoy this. We got 97 people in the chat room. Hit the like button. I'm going to run some commercials. If you want to come in and talk about it, let's talk about it.
but make sure you contribute to the super chat the cash app and the paypal the link is right there if this is helpful to you hit the number one button hit the like button if this is helpful to you hit the number one button hit the share button also subscribe to the channel but in the meantime, make sure you contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal. We'll be right back. The only time black men are allowed to speak is when it benefits others. So hey, this is your opportunity to speak. I want to hear from you. And if you want to make this voice louder and clearer, then what you need to do is contribute to the Cash App, the PayPal, and the Super Chat. I appreciate you. And lucid. They should see the CZ scene was locked down in conflict. Now we free. They teach us all about the Benjis. He never truly believed. He received the message like breeze blowing them leaves. That means he felt what they mean and he liked to bling. Even then he knew that's not all his life would be. So he achieved and life became a breeze. A rich dude legacy question. Is that all I'll be? There's nothing more. Surely before I pass this door home and gone, I prove these hustlers wrong. I'm moving on, moving on away from you. Away from you. I'm moving on, moving on, on away from you. Moving on, away from you. Billy parked on the boulevard, Wraith on the way. But they asked him to pay for that ghost and scam away. Got that Rolls Royce money, that millionaire toy money. He don't even drive them cars, just ride when it's sunny. His sons like him, they like stunning. But it's been day 400 since he talked to his mama. Too much childhood drama. Child with too much to ponder. An adolescent mind wonder was a rude dude with it. Grew up and got cool with it. Now he's true with it. Could speak for a week on it. Got grown past on it. Dude still high as hash on it. They let they life pass on it. I say let it go, homie. Lost son, you owe it to you. Too much time to lose. I'm moving on, moving on away from you. Moving on away from you. I'm moving on, moving on away from you. Moving on away from you. So many lost sons trying to find their fathers, trying to find their young ones. Both sons and daughters, no need for repeat. Ain't trying to compete, he forgave everybody involved in the name of peace. Tried to stay and keep a G, decide it's better to flee. They want to see how he living, somewhere by the beach. Took back what was stolen, now he's where he should be. Lost son legacy, homie, book one through three. Rules to live by, how to find happiness and peace. Not easy as he's making it seem. You see, happiness, joy, and love, peace. Money alone won't reach, fight every day. To maintain peace, I'm moving on, moving on away from you. Moving on away from you. I'm moving on, moving on away from you. Moving on away from you. DDD among you. What are rules to live by? Volume 6, Lost Son. The only time black men are allowed to speak is when it benefits others. So hey, this is your opportunity to speak. I wanna hear from you. And if you wanna make this voice louder and clearer, then what you need to do is contribute to the Cash App, the PayPal, and the Super Chat. I appreciate you. All right, guys, so here's the other thing I wanna talk about. So some of us, um, you, you need to learn how to deal with your mothers. You need to learn how to deal with them. And so I kind of alluded to this when we got to the front for at the beginning here. You got to first recognize and avoid her triggers. All right. 
Um, you had years coping with terrible mothers and, and you may have already educated you on the do's and the don'ts on dealing with it. Bring up your baby, your, your father, bring up somebody like that. That may be something that, that tries to, that, you know, that causes her to be triggered. All right. You got to, uh, you got to choose a tolerable method to contact her. All right. If you're in a situation that every time you show up, your mom wants to sit you down and talk about you and you got to hear all that foolishness, uh, then, you know, maybe you need to think about a phone call as opposed to showing up. Maybe you need to think about an email or a text message. All right. So these are different ways in which you got to because see what you don't want to be in, in a situation is where, you know, she triggers you. And now you down for two or three weeks. You can't even enjoy yourself. You know, you down for the rest of the day. Whatever plans you had, uh, they're just out the window. You see what I'm saying? So that's another situation you got to deal with. Now, we've talked about what the Bible says, right? Right. Honor thy mother and thy father, right? Specifically in the black community, we're talking about the mother because they're the, you can always disrespect the father in the black community. That's nothing. All right. But you can't do that to your mom. Right. In the black media. Otherwise, people will be looking at you sideways. But look, before we get into this any deeper, look, make sure if you want to come in, the link is in the chat room right there. Join the conversation. Let's talk about it. I know you guys have a lot on your mind. I want to hear what you have to say about this subject. So join the conversation. Don't be upset. You don't have to show your face if you don't want to. You can change your name. You can just talk about your problems. It's good to talk about these things because see, if you don't, man, you keep all this up inside you. The next thing you know, you 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 out there busting caps at somebody. You you can't you don't understand why you triggered every time a woman even sounds like your mom. You triggered every time. Um, um, you, you triggered every time, right? She even says something, you know. So you can't even have a sustainable relationship with your woman. You can't even do it. it it's just it's impossible. You see what I mean? It, it's just. And so that's affecting your relationship. So I'm trying to teach you guys how to become better men. I'm trying to teach you guys how to become the men that you need to be, to be fathers, to be husbands, if that's your choice. But it, but in, in, in also just to be able to deal with this world that we're in that, that's waiting for you to trigger, especially if you're a black man, they wait for you to get triggered. They wait for you to have a bad day. And then that's the day the police pull you over with a busted tail light. And he giving you a hard time. The next thing you know, you get handcuffed and they wonder why you got shot. He was resistant. He was just pulling him over for a tail light. He should have cooperated because you was having a bad day because it starts with stuff like this. You see what I mean? Because you haven't learned how to properly deal with this conflict. So I'm saying all that to say, if you want to talk about it, you need to emote. That's the time that we have set aside for this right now. Let's talk about it. Nobody else is going to let you talk about it like this and, and, and listen to you and understand you know, that's why you brothers call me Uncle D, because I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to listen to you, hear what you got to say, and let's work through these issues uh, in the brotherhood. But in the meantime, those of you who will, make sure you contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal. And, of course, the link to the chat room is there. Doesn't cost anything to join, so come on in. Let's have this conversation. Uh, but in the meantime, as I said before, all right, so... Um, you know, you got to establish boundaries in the relationship with these these horrible moms that you've had, right? And you got to know how to limit those triggers, all right? And now, if I'm if, if if I'm wasting my my time, let me know. All right, I can cut this off and go do something else. But if this is helpful to you guys, hit the number one button. If these Bible verses, if this if this day that I've set aside to to to, to help us deal with um, the conflict that we have in religion, the same religion that says it's okay to have us enslaved, and they were teaching us that, teaching us half of it, and not teaching us the whole Bible, the Bible that talks about liberate. You know, I'm I'm giving you some food. You know, I'm giving you some 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 word of God, as they say. All right. So when the Bible thumpers come thumping at you, you can thump back. If this is helping you, hit the number one button. That's all I'm asking you guys to do. If this is helping you, hit the number one button, and uh, we'll proceed. All right. Hit the number one button and hit the like button. Thumbs up button. I need some thumbs up if this is helpful to you. So, again, um, you got to establish boundaries in these relationships with these horrible mothers. Again, you can't choose your family, but you can choose how you deal with. It, OK, so establishing boundaries. The first thing I said, recognize and avoid her tricks. All right. You don't want her. 
Uh, for example, if your mom is constantly berates you about your career choice, your women, you might choose to avoid those subjects when you're around them. She don't like the fact that you like traveling overseas. Uh, then that's something you need to shut off. Shut that part of your life off. You're a grown man. All right. If, if, if she chooses, uh, you got to choose a tolerable level in which to contact her. You know, contact. For example, you might only talk to her on certain days, like the weekends. So that way you got the rest of the day to chill. You don't have to talk to her in the morning on Monday when you're trying to get to work and you got some work work to do. And then she just stress you out. And, and, and all damn day. So, you know, it takes you to Wednesday after you didn't have a couple of drinks uh, to, to get that out of your system. All right. Here's another thing, man. You can verbalize how her actions affect you. You know, she might have been a terrible mom and you had to take it when you were young, when you were a teenager. But, uh, you know, at a certain point, you're a grown man. You need to speak up. Like, look, hey, you know what? Well, you might say something like, mom, it hurts me when you criticize my dad. You know, I don't like that. You know, it seems like you. You go out of your way to search for bad qualities about that. I don't like that. And you got to stand up for yourself like a man. Stop trying to be the nice guy. Here's another thing. You got to express your boundaries. All right. Um, what does that mean? You you know, you've isolated which of her actions affect you. And, and now it's time to tell her clearly, don't cross that line. I don't like it when you call me up bringing up old stuff. I don't like that. You know, for instance, you might say, I need you to stop bad mouthing uh, my girlfriend. You know, I need you to stop doing that. I, I need you to stop sharing personal information about me with family members. All right. You, you, you say that now you've said it. Right. Or you might spend some time writing down your boundaries if possible. You know, that's what you, you know, you might get uh, 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 tongue tied when you get in the present. Write that down, you know. Um, and if you haven't, um, if you haven't. Uh, if you've never set boundaries, you got to take some time and establish boundaries. You might have a friend. He always call you near, oh, ninja. Say, man, don't do that. I don't like that word. That's how you set a boundary. So you can practice with your friends. And when you deal with your mom, you can deal with her. And then there's got to be consequences associated with violating your boundaries, i.e. you divest yourself. Of a, you remove yourself from them. They don't get your attention anymore. OK, now, here's the thing. Again, like I said, follow through with the consequences. And, and so what's another? In other words, you, you told her to stop and uh, and she didn't stop. You know, uh, you know, I don't want you doing that. I don't want you talking about me in front of everybody because my kids are listening. When you say that and they come back and ask me questions. And uh, if you do it again, I'm not bringing my kids away. Period. That's what you do. Right. And then you don't negotiate with it. It's not, I'm just playing. I mean, them kids need that. No, that's not going to happen, period. And that's it. And stand firm in how you feel. And it don't matter. And if she gets angry, don't respond. Just move around. You know, at that point, she's just a woman. She's not, you know, she's just another. She can't throw that honor thy mother and our father because you're going to hit her with what? Well, this, this verse says this. This verse says that. This verse says that. Are you acting in the way that God wants you to act? Well, then this is what one Corinthian says about that. I shouldn't even be around you. You're a rebel. You're speaking bad about me. Mm, you see what I'm saying? Um, and how do you, and here's, so after that, and many of you guys got emotional wounds you're dealing with, so we'll deal with that in a minute. But in the meantime, let me see. I-N-I-R-2, N-N-E-R-2 says, thank you for this particular topic, Dennis. A lot of us are psychologically starved from, from our upbringing and treating this black boys. This carries over to the development of men. I know. That's what I'm saying. And this is why you can't be free. This is why when you go to these other places, you're still the same person. There's no geographical cure for an emotional issue. All right? So you're going to go down to Columbia and have the same. See, the thing is, those women have less triggers for you because they come from a different culture. So they're not going to trigger you, but you still have the same problem. Does that make sense? In other words, those women in the Dominican Republic, Colombia, Thailand, uh, East Africa, West Africa, um, their culture is different. So they're not going to act like your mother or like the rest of the black American women, these lovely ladies that we have in our society, because they were raised by a different culture. So they won't easily trigger you. But see, you're still dealing with that. So that that cancer is still inside of you eating you up. And so even though you can find a woman you can deal with, that still doesn't make you, the, you still don't have the peace of mind and happiness you need. 
And that's why it's important that we deal with this. You see what I mean? Because until you deal with this, you know, it's hard to be at peace with yourself. So again, you know, you gotta, you gotta heal those emotional wounds. All right. But the thing, what I'm trying to do with you guys is stop the, the harm coming in. You see what I mean? It's almost like uh, you've been stabbed four or five times as a child and they keep stabbing you, you know, every time, every, every year they keep. So I'm telling you, no, this is how you stop. The, this is how you stop from getting stabbed. Right. Those things I talked about. Now let's heal these wounds is what I'm trying to tell you guys. So what do you need to do? You, you definitely need to see some therapists. I've seen a therapist myself. Man. When I found in 2015, when I found, found myself uh, dating the same type of women that, that uh, had been a problem for me, um, very similar to, to, to the characteristics of my own maternal upbringing and women in my life. I decided to seek some therapy and that put me on the right path. And I realized I need to change so that I can attract a different kind of woman, which is what I've done now, you know, and it's taken some time. I wish I had had therapy back in my twenties or when I was a teenager. And then I wouldn't have had to go through all the issues because see what happens is when you get used to a certain white type of woman, you raise around those type of women, they may not be good for you, but you're used to it. You can tolerate. So even though they're not good for you, but because you can tolerate it, you'll deal with that. That's your standards. And, and one of the things about therapy is it helps you raise your standards for what you will and what you won't deal with. OK. And so that's why therapy is something good. Um, you know, a, a therapist can also help you work with, you know, how you develop your conflict resolution skills. And, 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 and you learn how to conflict ask for support from others in your life, you know, as opposed to being timid and afraid. What's something else you can do, man? You guys have to perform what's called self-care regularly. And the crazy thing is, man, um, I had to really talk to some people about this, okay? Um, self-care is not getting a haircut. Uh, it's not necessarily self-care, okay? Um, self-care is not taking a, a bath. Self-care might be taking a luxurious bath, you know, when you got to, you sitting there, you really relaxing, you got your Epsom salt in there, you chilling and hell, you might have a drink and smoke some cigar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If that's what you like is a bath. You sort of mean, you know, ladies, they do it all the time. They get the luxurious oils and scents. That's a, they're not just cleaning themselves, but it's a self-care kind of thing. You know, it, it, it's almost like, uh, uh, and you need this because your mother's personality and her behaviors may leave you feeling unloved or misunderstood. And so what you need to do is you need to nurture your emotional health by creating a self-care practice of, of pleasant activities that you do just for you. Uh, you don't need to just you don't need to take a luxurious bath, smoke your cigar, have your drink. And I don't say do that all the time. But, you know, you don't need to sit in there and do that. Uh, to get clean, you're doing that because it shows you that you love you. You see what I mean? Showing yourself self-love. That's kind of what it is. What's another one? Uh, you got to make a decision whether or not it's healthier to cut off ties with your mother. All right? And that's a hard decision. I saw a brother early on said this. And see, although it may be difficult to consider, you might have to spend some time pondering if it's the best thing to maintain a relationship with your mom or not. See, a toxic parent can have a major effect on your mental health and well-being. Why is that? Because that's your parent. They, they have a certain place in your heart, a certain place in your mind. You hear your father's voice. You hear your mother's voice. You see what I'm saying? And so they, they can say things to you that affect you far worse than somebody in the street. You don't care what people in the street. You're a big dummy. But if your mom says that, that's going to hurt you worse, man. If your mom out there talking bad about What's the rationale? Man, if your own mom talking bad about you, oh, man, you must be real bad. You see? And so you have to determine whether or not it's better just to cut off ties with her. I mean, I, I know that's hard, fam. I know that's hard. I get it. And that's why I gave you all those biblical verses, because what are they going to do? The Bible says, honor thy mother and thy father. But what else does it say? Not if they're doing evil. God doesn't even like people. God doesn't even want you associating with evildoers like that. That's what that's what we were talking about earlier. All right. 
So if her behavior doesn't improve and she doesn't respect your boundaries, uh, you may have to make the hard choice uh, to get you get some distance. All right. Don't make that decision lightly. Give yourself some time to reflect on, 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 on what it would be like not having a relationship with your mom. You can even go so far as to write your thoughts down in a journal and uh, seek advice from your therapist or your close friends. All right. Um, so that's something you should consider. If, if this is hitting home, if this is good advice, because see, some of you guys already are thinking about this. You've already contemplated this. You just haven't had anybody talk to you. Okay. You, you, you haven't had anybody tell you it's okay to feel this way, especially if you're a black man in the black community. All right. Anybody who wants to come in here and have this conversation, you want to come talk to me, the link is in the chat room, man. Come on in. I, I invite you brothers to come in, man. I love you guys. You know, I want to see you do better. I have a vested interest in black men being uh, better. Uh, you know, of course, you know, my ultimate goal is to have 22 million uh, physically fit, physically fit, uh, strong, healthy, financially stable, emotionally stable. Black men in the United States. That's what I want. I want my brothers to be better. And, and again, I tell y'all all the time, I'm not your leader. All I want you to do is be better because otherwise what happens? Who are you going to take that out on? You're going to take it out on another black man. And that could be me or my sons or my cousins or, or my uncles or people I love. You're not going to take it out on the white man. You're not going to take it out on the black woman. You're going to take it out on another black man. That's who you're going to take it out on. So it's incumbent upon me since I live here. Uh, for me to 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 uh, tell you guys now, my man R. Alexis says unfiltered. Will you recommend going to a black therapist or any therapist in general? Man, I got an answer for that. Come on in, and I will tell you in person. I don't want to just uh, you know join the chat room. Come on in. I mean, hit the link. The link is right there. Make sure you guys contribute to the super chat, the cash app, and the PayPal too. Shout out to. Uh, uh, Quincy, thank you so much for the cash app. You see Chocho, we already got him. You guys are light on the cash app. Y'all make sure y'all contribute to the super cat, super chat, the cash app, and the PayPal. I'll uh, keep going. I'll keep talking. Um, here are some things also I want to talk about, right? Uh, consider the lesson you've learned. You know, it may seem impossible for anything good to come out of a bad relationship with your mom. All right, I'm trying to help y'all see the light side but you can learn to use the experience to your advantage. Why? Okay. For example, maybe your mother's desire to control your life caused for you to fight for what you really wanted. As a result, you are less likely to allow a girlfriend or a friend or employees to control your life as well. You're willing to stand up for what you believe in. That's something that you get. You know, if you can make it out the black community, you know, with all the, the control and restraints that we, you pretty much make it anywhere. Think about all the other qualities and habits you've developed from learning uh, to manage your mom. You know how to manage those type of women. And here's another thing. If you were abandoned by your mom, what? You know how to you know how to get move and shake on your own. You can go to any city, any town, any country. You pass for a bro ready. You see what I mean? You SYSBM ready. You've been saving yourself since you were seven years old. You understand what I'm saying? So this is you. This is who you are. And you're that way because unfortunately you were abandoned by your mom and you didn't have the dad, you know, so you good. All right. And so these are so deep. And so you can use that to create a new, more positive story for yourself. All right. It, you know, at, at, at the same time, try to be aware of avoiding the mistakes your mother made when parenting your own children, fellas. That's what you got to do, man. Make, make sure, as I said earlier, if you feel that you don't want a woman like your mom, raising your children, make sure you don't pick that type of woman, all right? Now, what else you want to do here? You want to change your self-talk. What does that mean? That means if, you're, if you've are if you matured into an adult, adult with a terrible mother, uh, you may have created a negative narrative, narrative about your life and your abilities, all right? You're saying things like, I don't deserve to be happy. I don't deserve to be rich. No one will ever love me. I'm going to die alone. You may feel... You may feel that's true. However, these negative statements won't make you feel better. You know, they'll actually work to revise. So you got to work to revise your self-talk into more positive statements. You see what I mean? You got to say stuff like, I deserve more. Now look, shout out to my man, Keith Pittman. Keith, man, you're the first one to find the, the emojis that I put in here, man. I got 
Shaka Zulu emojis. I got all kind of emojis. You the first one that I to put the emojis in there. Somebody hit the Shaka Zulu emoji. I got Mansa Musa. I got Hannibal in there. Hit these emojis up, man. Let's, let's get this cracking. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna. I got one myself, man. Hit these emojis up, man. Um, but uh, thank you, uh, Keith J. Pittman. I appreciate that. Uh, what else we had? So, um, what else was I saying? We got one guest in here. I'm gonna talk to our Alexis for a minute. But again, changing your self talk. How do you do that? For many people, it's better to start off uh, with a neutral self talk. Like, uh, you know, if you deal with a lot of negative self talk, studies have shown that it's more effective to first go neutral before going positive, since it's easier to make the switch uh, from neutral talk uh, than, 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 than from negative. What's the example? You might have negative thoughts uh, in, in, or, in or your mind whenever someone compliments your appearance. Like, I know that's true. I know that's not true. I know I'm ugly. A more neutral way to rephrase this might be, I may have a hard time believing that. But if someone is going out of their way to compliment me, then they're probably online. What does that mean? See, a lot of you, man, you so used to being treated bad by women. When you go places like the Dominican Republic and Colombia and you have women catering to you, it's almost impossible for you to sit there and accept that good treatment. You see what I mean? Because you got so you got to say stuff like I deserve it. You know what I mean? Or if you treat me like this, if you're saying this nice thing about me, I guess it's true. And then you got to get to the point where you can say, I deserve it. I deserve to be treated uh, weighted on hand and foot. I deserve to be treated like a king. I've been through so much. Uh, uh, this is th that was my that was I went through that crucible. You see what I'm saying? You got to modify. And here's another. You got to modify your own parents stuff. Having a different mother, difficult mother may make you feel ineffective as a parent yourself. Working with family therapists can help you overcome any negative uh, 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 patterns that you may have and uh, that you picked up from your mom. And, you know, because see, a lot of them, what? A lot of us think, well, I made it. And so, uh, you know, it must have worked. Look at me. I'm perfect. And, and you forget that you're not perfect. But uh, there's some other things I want to talk about. But for the most part, that's uh, that's pretty much it. My man, R. Lexus, is in here. Uh, what's up, R. Lexus? How you doing, man? Uh, you had an interesting question. W talk to me. What's up, bro? And then make sure you guys contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal. But R. Lexus, what's the question that you had? Uh, good evening. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my question was whether we should go to a black therapist or a, any therapist in general that's uh, all right so you know, here's has the problem. A good, outstanding here's, presentation. here's the problem with going to a black therapist all right uh female nature does not care what your occupation is so if you go to a black female a uh, black american female what do you think is going to happen when you start talking about your mom Oh, sacred cow. Say exactly what she's she's gonna she's gonna practice something called uh, uh, female owned group preference, specifically to black. It's kind of like the same situation when you go to a black female lawyer who is representing you in a family law case, and your yeah. wife is a black female. You see what I mean? Yes. It's almost like damn. Are you whose side you on? So what do I recommend? I recommend as far as therapists, what you probably want to do is get yourself that is not a member of the black community. You see what I mean? Get yourself a one, get yourself a person who is definitely not a feminist. You might do better getting someone who's Latina, someone who's Asian, someone who's white, because at least you know they're going to give you advice based on their experiences from their culture, you see? And so if they come from a culture where they are allowed to call out toxic mothers, then cool. Now that's not totally writing off every black female therapist or every black male therapist, because some of them might be simps. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, and, and that's the problem with black men. Some of us are, I love my mom, man. You need to work that out with your mom. No, don't do that. And then they get all brothery with you. You see what I mean? One thing you'll notice about me whenever I'm talking to somebody, even when I do my private consultations with guys, is I'm very professional. I'm very sterile. I don't get all brother, brother with you. You see what I mean? I give you the professional service. I don't get all, 
I say common. I don't get common with you just because you're black. You, you spending your money with me. I'm going to give you the respect you deserve. I'm going to be the I'm going to be uh, the lawyer that you asked for when you paid your money. You see what I'm saying? But unfortunately, yeah. not a lot of us get a little too common with each other. Yeah, bro. You know this. That, no, look, this is what I want. I want to hear this, that and the other. And, and, and it's a way you learn to set people to the point where they understand what well, this is where you coming from. I'm not. You want to be a little cold. You see what I'm saying? And and yeah. so if you're dealing with a white female therapist, she's going to tell you, yeah, my mom, your, your mom was horrible. And uh, <laughs> and she's going to give you all the reasons why. You know, in fact, she's not going to hold back because she understands the, th the stereotypes. And if she's talked to enough black men, then she already knows. Same thing's going to be with a Latino woman, Asian woman. They just pretty much going to call it like they see it, but Unfortunately, a black therapist might be biased, especially if she's a female, because she don't want to say, man, look at the gentleman, Kevin, Kevin Samuels. He's had therapists on his show. You see how those black therapists have been oh, trying yeah. to dodge fault? I mean, this is the these are therapists that we have in the community. This is these are the, we got. It's like the police policing themselves. You see what I mean? That doesn't work. So you get you get an outside opinion, you get an outside opinion. Now, in other circumstances, it might be different. You see what I mean? But but if you want to hear the truth, you know, and of course, there are some women like I had three women on Friday night. And if any of them were therapists, they're honest. They seem pretty damn honest. You see what I'm saying? So but I would say get an outside opinion from a person from a different culture, not like our own to speak the truth. To. That, that would be my advice. And, you know, shout out to all the black therapists. But they, ain't, you know, you know. You can run across a brother who's a simp, you know, and you can run across a sister who's beholden to the matriarchy, and you go wrong either way. You see what I'm saying, bro? Absolutely. I was gonna. I was. I'm not going to a female therapist. It would have to be a male therapist, mm -hmm. just so mm -hmm. I want that perspective. Someone who can re reassure me of my masculinity. Mm -hmm. Even though I, it, for me, it would be more of a checkup. I just want to make sure that there's nothing wrong with me. I really don't have any issues towards my mother. Is she's a she's a fantastic woman. Mm -hmm. um, I I know from what I see and hear from the brothers in the chat, and I, I I feel sorry for them that they had to experience that. But on my end, I just want to make sure that I'm all right and I'm firing in on all cylinders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, bro. You, you, the reason I read that survey earlier, right? The yeah. reason I posted that up earlier, so y'all can see, you're not the only ones that perceived that they had all the mother. Your brothers are not by yourself, okay? And so you're not alone. This is see, it's not a race thing; it's a culture thing, because there are plenty of black mothers from other countries and and, and and that are fine and doing great by their children. And on top of that, uh, it wasn't always like this. You see, uh, we had it hard back in the 19, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, but at least we had intact families and. You know, they had, they were dealing with a lot worse back then. But, you know, the mothers, were, for the most part, they was nurturing. They did what they had to do to make sure their sons grew up. Now it's, it's just horrible, you know, and so we have to adjust. But the main thing is, man, and the reason I brought those biblical verses up, because the main thing holding you guys, you know something is wrong, but see, you have to make an exception for what you know is wrong because they tell you what? Oh, this is God's word. Honor your... Basically, they want you to interpret honor your mother and father, honor your mother and father at all costs. But really, particularly in the black community, as the mother, they want you to honor it. And so they hit you over the head with that and have you just really in a situation where you're compromising what you know to be right, and what you know to be true, you know, uh, in the name of the Lord. I mean, they justified slavery and stuff like that. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, but anyway, any other questions you have, brother? Anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no, pretty much it was a phenomenal broadcast, and I'm almost done with the first book. I'm getting on to the second book. Uh, okay. Guys, I highly recommend the book again. I'm thinking about getting another copy, another three copies, just so mm -hmm. I have them so that they stay intact and then, you know, kind of a collector's item. But yeah. if you haven't purchased the book already, go ahead and get it. Great read. And what our Lex is talking about in my books, Rules to Live By, How to Maintain Peace of Mind and Happiness in the Conflicted World. You can order those books by sending me an email to Sperling 
Dennis at gmail.com is running across the bottom there. I'll be more than happy to autograph a copy and send it to you. What are your thoughts on the book since we're there, man? Because I address a lot of these issues in the book. What are your thoughts on on what you've read so far and has it hit home? It, it It's very relevant to this topic as far as the relationship. And it, I hope you don't mind me bringing it up, the one with, with your mother, your own mother. Mm -hmm. And right. how what I've noticed is that your fiance is complete is a complete 180 compared to your mother right as far as her femininity how she if she presents herself at from the pictures and the photos that you have with your sons and, mm -hmm. and your fiance she's a completely different woman and i can based off what i see i can tell she probably doesn't curse like a sailor so, right so the thing is man it took me going to therapy to realize it was a problem. You see what I mean? Because you can become so accustomed to dealing with that that you think it's normal or you have a slot in your life for that. Here's another thing. Traveling overseas and seeing experience how I should be treated with the respect and I see the way that other men are treated in their societies. I realized that it, was, it wasn't it was me. It was our culture. You see what I'm saying? My mother, like many of you, I, you guys other mother, that's why I said this earlier on. Uh, unfortunately, many of our black mothers grew up in the same toxic culture with the same type of horrible mothers exhibiting the same type of destructive behavior. Maybe it wasn't her grandma, but maybe she saw it. Maybe she was she saw this mom treating her son like that. So she treated me this way. Not, not necessarily <laughs> grandma, but a friend of hers. You see what I'm saying? And yeah. so she they 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 got that behavior from each other. It's not the it's not the race, it's the culture. The culture tells it it's the program. You see, all the computers are going to act that way because they're programmed the same. They got the same operating system. Does that make sense? It, it absolutely makes sense. But I also saw in the book your Aunt Victoria. I hope, am I? Yeah, that's fine. All that the names name? have been changed to protect the innocent. But go ahead. Okay, so your Aunt Victoria, the way when she came out and wanted to talk to you, even though you're, you're her sister, your mother were not on speaking terms. She was right. still looking out for you because she saw the best intentions for you. Right. That also struck, out, out, and that's a direct opposite of what your mother would have done mm -hmm. if it had been her nephew. I don't think she would have came out and tried to talk to him at that point. Right, right. It's, it's an interesting dynamic. And see, the thing is, yeah. my book is not just about me. It's about this culture that we exist in in the black community right now it's it'll be one of those books i think in a hundred years when people look back and say well what happened to black folks they'll say well we read this book by uh you know dennis d sperling called rules to live by how to maintain peace of mind and happiness in a conflicted world and what it basically does it gives us all the reasons why the black society no longer exists basically they tore themselves up from the inside there was so much conflict within the family that it spilled over into the community and there was nothing holding them there together. And so what happened? The men eventually re realized the way that we resolve this conflict is don't re-enter it anymore. They, they start marrying out. They didn't get married. Uh, they moved on. Uh, this is this is what's happening to us right now. You see what I mean? And, and that, that book that I began writing back in 2011 is now more important than ever. Those books, again, if you guys haven't got my books, Rules to Live By, How to Maintain Peace of Mind and Happiness in the Conflicted World, you really should. It can really help you all resolve some of the internal issues that you're dealing with as men, especially as black men growing up in the 50s, 60s, uh, 60s 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s. It, it, it's really tell. it's a roadmap to what you're dealing with and how you escape. And uh, I, re I highly recommend it. Thank you so much, R. Alexis. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate everyone. And, uh, you know, I do my best to try to educate you guys and give you food. I don't want to just talk about the same topics. We could talk about SYSBM. We could talk about the latest shooting. We could talk about all these things. But what I try to do is give you something that you can say, yeah, I can take that and I can work with it. I always leave references in the bottom here. So you can go over these references yourself. It'll always be here as long as my YouTube channel is up. If you download it, you can. there's references right there. You can look it up for yourself. So it's not just Dennis Sperling talking. It's not just Uncle D. 
It's these experts who put these things together. You can vet it, not just me talking out the side of my head. But in the meantime, man, if you got a horrible mind, man, the first thing you got to do is realize it and accept it for what it is. Um, don't let them use the Bible and, and Holy Scripture to beat you up with it and keep you in a subservient position. And uh, if you can heal the relationship, then fine, go ahead. If you feel it's worth it, fine. But at some point, if you feel that it's better for you to cut ties and move on for your own emotional well-being, then you have to do that. Because, see, the thing is, as a black man, you, you maybe have 70 years on this planet. And if you already over 35, you halfway through. You've been dealing with this your whole life. You don't want to hang on. You know, if you're 20, you don't want to be 50 trying to finally admitting the fact that, you know, damn, it was a horrible situation I was in. You want to learn early, so you want to be move on because you want to be free. This is what I want you guys to do. I want you brothers to be free because, see, the more frustration and anger that you hold in, the more likely it is you're going to explode on me or one of my sons or, 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 or somebody else in my family that looks like me. You see what I mean? Another black man is what I'm saying. So I'm helping you save you, and that's saving me. So this is this is my me doing my part. So you know, you guys, again, get therapy, seek help. But in the meantime, if you had a horrible parent, you got a horrible mom, then it's, it's it's okay. You're not the only ones, brothers. I want to see you guys do well. I love you guys. The reason I open up my life and I share with you guys is because I know it's creating help. I know I've called people back. You know, I know you guys, some of you guys are close, so depressed, you're close to committing suicide. Some of you guys refuse to even enter in a serious relationship. All you want to do is just smash and go. Some of you have kids. You don't even want to deal with the women because she reminds you so much of your mother. That's neglecting the kids. That's tre that's creating a cycle. I get it. I understand. I'm doing this to try to help my black brothers. I love you. I want to see you do well. I want to give a shout out to everybody who contributed to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal. Big shout, big shout out to our Lexus for bravely coming in here and talking about this subject. Normally, we got a whole bunch of people in here, but this is not something that you guys are ready to deal with. I get it. I understand. It is what it is. I love you guys. But in the meantime, this is Uncle D, and I'm out.